frost damage can occur in canola paddocks when temperature fall below minus two degrees. Frost can cause ice crystallization in the plant um, organs, resulting in a dehydration and mechanical injuries to the plant. In a frost affected paddock, first sign is the drooping in fluorescence, which is a temporary symptom and will recover on its own. After a frost event, just visit your paddock and look for the plants damaged by frost. For this, tag few plants in the paddock, go into a few meters inside, uh, inside edge of the paddock. Don't look for the symptoms at the plants at the edge. Look for the low-lying areas in a paddock and the areas where there's a more stubble retention and in a light textured soils. And then tag few plants and come after five to seven days of a frost event and look for the symptoms. So we can clearly see bud discoloration from green to creamish white. And what we can see in the fluorescence, um, some pot abortion, uh, but we can see the new green buds coming because canola being indeterminate, it keeps on flowering even after the stress is removed. Another symptom of frost can be a twisted inflorescence, uh, particularly uh, when crop is flowering. The most economically damaging frosts occur in canola at the end of flowering to the grain development phase, when pods are extending and grains are filling. Let's have a look at the symptoms. So we can see some of the pods um, like this turning yellow, yellowish green or more yellow. So that shows a symptom of pod abortion as well. So this is frost affected pod. And we see here the pods have been lost in a favorable season uh, when there is enough soil moisture to finish the crop um, there are better chances of recovery and compensation whereas if there's a heat stress after this uh, so then there are possibly less chances of recovery so farmers have to make decisions depending upon the seasonal conditions uh, whether to go for graze hay or grain so here we see missing pods um, that's an aborted pod, um, less than two centimetres and it stopped its development and it just aborted. Here we go, this is a twisted pod and a little bit of purplish discoloration on this. Uh, tiny pods. And you can see more symptoms when you pull apart those pods and look for the grains which are, which are healthy as well as look for the grain which are dead or unhealthy, which results in a shriveled grain and impacts the grain yield and quality. What we're looking at here is um, a healthy pod, nicely developing grain which are plump and in the another, another part, it looks um, there are only five, six nicely developing grain, but others on the sides, like three dead, shriveled, and uh, four or five dead on this side. While you are looking for the symptoms for the frost, be mindful that the similar sort of symptoms um, are developed by heat stress and drought stress. So the best way is to look for the weather conditions uh, in your area. Along with the abiotic factors, some of the biotic factors such as um, aphids can affect the pod appearance, uh, such as stunned pods and yellowing, uh, but you have to look for the symptoms. You will see aphids on the other parts of the plants as well. Cleidotinia will cause uh, branch death, but you will find some of the lesions on the stem and leaf. Um, to identify um, sclerotinia and there will be white fluffy fungal growth along with that. Um, that's how you can differentiate um, uh, frost damage versus other biotic factors uh, uh, effect on uh, canola pods. Will canola recover from frost stress? It just depends upon the crop growth stages as well as on the seasonal conditions. For example, if there's enough soil moisture at the finish, 
Canola being indeterminate, keep on flowering 30 to 40 days. Therefore, there's a better chance of recovery and compensation. Whereas in a drought season, when there is a dry finish, there is less opportunity um, to recover from frost. If crop is at late flowering, which is 10 to 20% flower left, and at the grain filling stage, uh, the chances of recovery are less. Um, therefore, farmers' decisions come into play whether to go for hay or for the grain harvest. So, some recommendations for frost management. Pre-season adjustment. Look for the low-lying areas in your paddock, put some data logs and record the temperature of your paddock. And secondly, tactical adjustments such as crop choice, variety choice, adjusting phenology to the optimal flowering windows and changing the inputs depending upon the growing season. So finally, one day after frost event, go to your paddock, look for the symptoms and tag some plants. Go after a week and look for the frost damage and do some assessments. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources. Thank you.